Hello again, it's been a long, long time. Many apologies for that. How many uh, videos on YouTube start with an apology? Anyway, I've got all the track down at last and uh, this is some testing I've done. So what I did first is um, I used a little GoPro, which I've had for quite a while, and uh, modified a, a truck and uh, put it on the truck to see what it looks like from a track's eye view. So uh, track cam, I've called it. I want of a better word, it's uh, not secure and you can see it wobbles a little bit, that's because it's uh, it's not actually secured to the truck, it's just resting on a on a flatbed. So uh, this is the first run through, a little bit later on in the video you'll see some um, trains running. So the line we're actually on now is, uh, we'll be going the wrong way really, this is the down line. So looking at the other way, Running the same way backwards, you go through the three-way point over a long right-hand point. Most of the points I've used are peak here, electro frog, a large radius. There's a couple of small radius ones. And we go over a double slip. There'll be a little platform on the right-hand side. Passing a diamond crossing there. And this would actually take us back onto the um, down line, I suppose. This would be going the right way as well. But uh, that's where it terminates. So this is another track cam view. Uh, this would actually feed into platform one, which is in the space on the right there. Uh, this is the up line. Obviously, a lot of work still to do. This is just track testing. It took me a long time to get the points wired up. I uh, had to swap the polarity with a lot of them, which is fun. Every time the uh, when I put a train on, when it came to the, a point where the polarity was wrong, it would just stop dead, obviously, short it out. So there, that would be uh, stopping at platform one. And then we can go through the double slip. Uh, and you wouldn't actually do this in reality, I suppose, unless there was some urgent need, because we've gone on the wrong line. But I am just testing the points. Anyway, yes, there was uh, a lot of wiring. I had to swap round, swap the E and B wires round, which are yellow and blue in my layout, um, because the uh, the polarity is wrong. Even though technically it doesn't have a polarity, it does really, if you know what I mean. If that makes sense. Okay, so another little test. So this is on the down line now again. I'm going to take a different route there through the three-way. I love the three-way point, man. It's very good. It's quite easy to wire up, unlike the double slips, which took a lot of thinking about. So we've gone through the three-way, through the double slip. Uh, so platform one be on the left again. Is the blue track setter. The track setters are, by the way, are invaluable. I would recommend everyone get a set of track setters. It keeps the uh, helps to keep the track nice and straight. You can see this little wobble on the camera, and that's purely because it's an old wagon I'm using with dodgy wheels, and uh, it's a GoPro balanced on. I should have perhaps stuck it on with something. Okay, let's try another line. So in this view, we're actually going through the centre line, which will be the, the through line, if you like. So, for example, if there's a, a train standing on the left in platform two, then uh, a train could come through this way, go around if it was not a stopping train, and go through the crossover here, and get past and continue on its merry way. That's the plan. Once again, through the double slip. I love the double slips. They are works of art. Took us a while to get my head round the, the wiring. That reverse, the polarity uh, of that one there, we've just gone through on both ends of the slip. Okay, so that's a track, the track cam. Time to put some trains on. So the train you can see coming through here goes through the three way point, through the double slip. Um, it's actually. 
entering what will be the, the goods line. Uh, this is one of my favourite trains. This is, uh, it's made by Backerman, but I got it from Locomotion. It's Shildon, uh, class 20, with the uh, sound, the lights modification. And it's a lovely, lovely runner. Really nice, it's slow speeds. So that route would take it back onto the uh, main line. It is running the other way on a different track. So it's going through over the uh, not over the crossover. It's going through the centre line, the through line again. I've noticed a few problems which I've uh, made a mental note of. Things I need to modify. That is a lovely train. Through the double slip. Over the three-way point. That's a manoeuvre that probably won't happen in real life. So far so good. Okay, here it comes again, a different track testing this time. You can see some of my dropper wires are a bit clunky, a bit large, obvious. I'm hoping the ballast and the paint will cover those up. The lovely run of this train. Okay, yeah, that goes through the double slip again. Onto the up line the wrong way. Platform one on the left again. Everything seems okay. Okay, here's another train. Uh, another loco I should say that I really like. It's the class 101 DMU from Backman with the speed whiskers. Obviously it's a two car set. The only problem is I've actually lost the coupling, the joiner, that connects them together, so I'm a bit annoyed about that. It's in the loft somewhere, but I just cannot find it. You can also see there the uh, Sulzer Plus 24, which is a lovely, lovely logo. Who's coming backwards? One car missing. Well, it's not missing, the connector's missing. It's a bit annoying. I hope I can find it. I'll have to send off to Backman for it. Because it makes a, an electrical contact between uh, the power car here and the other one for the lights. That's a nice runner. The strange thing is, I actually started off when I started doing the railway. Uh, steam trains were my thing, but the more I've watched online, the more I've actually. Um, operated the trains, you know, bought trains. I'm uh, leaning much more towards diesels. I have got quite a few steam engines. There's none in this video, perhaps next time. This is a one I actually got second hand from uh, the junction box. Um, class 58, I just love this, the shape of this locomotive. Yeah, the thing about this one is it's another lovely runner, by the way. I think it's been uh, well looked after by the previous owner, and it's it's been running well because it runs very smooth. Uh, the thing about this one, it had a, a decoder already fitted uh, when I took the body off, which I didn't know about, um, except it was unbranded, one I've never seen before. So I put an ESU lock pilot in. I'm a bit wary of using cheap unbranded ones. I've, with some of the videos I've seen on YouTube, people tend to have their favourites, and uh, so far the ESU lock pilots seem fantastic. Seem to work very, really well. That's a lovely running loco.
So here it comes again through the three way. This is the uh, the goods line. Sorry, it's not the goods line. I beg your pardon. That'd be uh, another platform, a very small platform in front of us there. A little quicker run through. Those McVitie's vans, by the way, in the background there. I've been buying those off eBay. Need to change the wheels. The wheels are gigantic. And finally, this is uh, one of the newest locos I've bought. It's uh, one of the new Hornby shunters. Haven't been out long. Class A shunters. Lovely paint job on this one. Uh, nightmare to take the body off to fit the decoder. As you can see, I broke a buffer off. I, uh, I'm new to this game and it's, it's tricky sometimes taking things apart. So that's it for another one. What I need to do now is to continue laying the track to eventually complete a full loop and then we can have things running round. Thanks for your comments and thanks for the subs. And uh, see you next time.